Hello everyone, I'm ExtraCheesy87 and this is Let's Play Disco Elysium Part 8. In the previous video, we finally made it to the dockyard after basically becoming the strongest person in the universe by defeating Measurehead in a bout of combat. Now we're gonna go talk to the Union boss and I guess in day one soonish. Hello? The coffee in the giant thermos is still lukewarm. A stair made of pallets leading up. Don't, okay, here's what you do. You don't interact with him. You ignore him. Survey his domain. So that you have some, some fuel for later. Just assert dominance over him by pretending he doesn't exist. That you're better than him. It won't let me like walk behind him. Alright, fine, what up? Before you is a what the hell? of a man seated behind a large desk. Bro, your face, it's wrong. Work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. All right, let's get straight to business. Uh, somebody died here recently? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two Are to Are you the cafeteria by. guy? Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite to his giant desk. I will not sit in the chair. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. You sure you don't moonlight as a cafeteria guy? I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. No. Oh. I will not sit, I will stand, because we are a strong paranormal de detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. I refuse. It's nothing. Yes. That's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. Can't do it. Island He's head. trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. As he nods, his multiple chins move like ocean waves. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Well, get taller. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. Turns back to his typewriter. No to the buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Fine. I'll call your fucking bluff. Hey, we really have no power here. I don't want to sit in the chair, Kim. Yes. Um. Mm. Oh, let's eh. Ah, eh, let's yes. try it. Because you're the best qualified. No, that doesn't seem right. That does make sense. I'm exceedingly qualified. If you're so well qualified. Why can't you remember why you were sent? Anyway, don't keep the lieutenant waiting. Ah, <sighs> fine. So that means I gotta, like, debase myself. Can I, like, steal something from him first to, like, reclaim some of my power? Mr. Dubois, I hope time is on your side this time. Please. Take a seat. I'd rather stand. Please, Mr. Dubois. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. All right, fine. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man, and reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a sly wink. Remain serious. So tell me, how can the head of the Dubardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? 
The chair I fucking died. On has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. Okay, it's so you violating your backside. I didn't really think about us taking damage there. So if you do drop to one HP, you can heal during it. Or if you drop to zero HP, all right. Well, that's kind of nice. So that doesn't mean we have. So we can kind of save these until we actually take damage. We don't have to like preemptively pop them. Oh, by the way. I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. Points to a giant novelty check on its desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. I really don't Go want ahead. to. Take it. I'd rather live on the street. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Um, I'm good. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts. There. I'll sleep on the damn bench. He crosses his arms in his ample midsection and sinks into his chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Well, joke's on you. They never trusted me with a gun in the first place. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. But we succeeded. Lost and gun. Maybe we didn't. Maybe maybe we didn't. I don't know. Cause I mean, this would be an auto succeed. I don't know how you'd be able to fail a six. That I think even if you have a one in your stats, you still always get a six. When he said, "Don't worry," he actually meant, "Be very worried." I'm not worried. I got this. Are you all right, Harry? You say you got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. I mean, if the kids shoot themselves, they shoot themselves. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Well, all right, this will take some damage. God, Wait. you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. Men can cry too. You want to cry? I don't want to cry. God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. It shows that we care about the people. Mr. Dubois. You don't look so good. Well, I'm sorry, man. They keep giving me skill checks that I can't pass. What is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. A large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect, you're in some kind of stupor. There are no Harrys. Let your mind go to your safe place. While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. See, we keep passing the stuff that's not a, that's not a skill check. Which is going to be flavor text. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? I mean, maybe it's important, I, I don't know. a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Uh, um... Yeah, nah, I'm as good as it gets, Mr. Dubois. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What? I'm not being dramatic. What an odd demonstration of... Uh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. 
quick. Here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin Ames. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. That doesn't sound sincere. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. Say nothing. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. Uh, first, do some menial task for me. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. I mean, we have opened a few doors in our life. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colors, Harry. <laughs> this really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. Um, why did you have to add the last sentence? An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. Ooh. You could win the trust of the arch liar. Pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Hey, who... Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Moves his glasses and rubs his nose? Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Why don't you do it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? And we'll at least accept the task for now. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. Maybe we can be betray him later. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. You guys just Special have the key? Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry. You spin kicked my strongest man in the face. I saw it from my window. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? I understand. I am a terrifying death machine. Don't worry, Harry. Between got you extremely and me, lucky. I'm not a huge fan of his race thing. But the Union did not get where we are today by frowning on eccentricity. Truly a, a bastion of integrity we're dealing with here. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. What, what's up with the Mr. Dubois stuff? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. It's Raphael. That's what the hanged corpse called you. Harry. No, that's not our name. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? We have been reborn, maybe in a past life, before we slayed an entity and were reincarnated into the current vessel we inhabit. We were a Harry, but nowadays we're 100% a Raphael. I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion i mean see what his game is first my memory's fine i'm just testing so you good to hear that harry apparently my sources were wrong however if you did have a spot of memory trouble i could help you out with my big fat folder i don't want that i guess word has already reached him no matter no harm done are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents Lieutenant inspects Everett over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? 
Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Okay. What kind of cop does it say? Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. I'm sorry? Yes. You seem to be, a lot of the time, but right now there's no reason to be. Let loose a little. Be you. Where'd you get the folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha, <laughs> you guys are so corrupt. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Right. Please continue, Harry. I'm going to be so mad if we fail this. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. That's not an RCM folder. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. They're the only ones who can count that high. We can't afford to uh, make them mad. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your action. They just keep coming up with new numbers and we just don't know how to how to stop them. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, this is some other kind of loser guy named Harry Dubois. Yes, that's what I said. We leveled Try up. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold our skill point for now. Uh, can, can I, uh, the body? You might have noticed there's one hanging on the tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare. The man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Yeah, you're a community leader. Help your community out. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Picks up the handset off a radio phone to his right and clicks a button. Jean-Luc, the cop who bested you in physical combat is here, and he has a little dead body in a tree problem. Namely, he needs it to be taken down. Please extend him this courtesy. Hey, guy. You can find Luke down at the gates, but you already knew that. Anyway, he's going to help you, now that he's back on his feet. You sure? Because it really was just a once-in-a-lifetime shot. Yes. Your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Mm, I don't care about my gun, keep it. I don't care about my gun. I love it, Harry. Wish I could be like that, but I can't. I have a responsibility to this community. I can't have a loaded gun out in the streets. The officer is exaggerating. Of course we care about the missing firearm, and we are actively looking for it as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. Well, too bad. Excellent, I'm not going to show him that I'm desperate. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun finding competition on our hands. All right, see ya. Wait, you need this to get in and out through the gate. Uh, yeah, sure, thanks. Yeah, you're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. What up? We should think about calling it today, maybe. Nights are still miserably cold this time of year. Yeah, do you have any money? We should take care of that, then. I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. 
We'll figure something out. Though he okay. finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. Hey, we made $43 today. All right, Kim, that's pretty good. Uh, how, how do I leave? Oh, uh, okay. For some reason, like, wouldn't let me just click straight. Uh, 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 something forgotten on the coffee table. I don't... Is there something I can click on? Because I don't see anything. Do I need like a flashlight? Unless whatever it was we could click on was just really small and I wasn't seeing it? I don't know. Yeah, we could drop that other container as well. Uh, where do I go? Ah, uh, there's some stairs. Bro, get the lead out. Marsh. On. Alect. Off. The crane stands tall, proud, erect, and still. No. A rusting control. Marsh. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Okay. Then we're going to loot it for all the goody goods inside maybe they'll have twenty seven dollars right I'm I am aware I see that it's it's dropping and with a surprisingly quiet thunk the crane places the container down this crane was built with a purpose which has now been fulfilled to move this container understood if only you knew i can't see how that was worth the records except for seeing the crane in action which i admit was satisfying and just in case we need these to get in it looks like there's like a little bar on it i don't know if we can open that before you stands a cargo container just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. You do? Because I don't. Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? I don't know, it just feels special. It's a cargo container, detective. Just like all the others. I got a hunch, Kim. All right, you got to back me up on we this. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to talk to the union, right? I'm going to knock on the door. Why? Open the door. Attempt to turn the handle. To no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. You're fucking lucky, sir. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna have so much rhetoric, and then you're gonna open up. Oh, ho, ho, you're gonna be so sorry that you didn't open up immediately. Think of all the adventures we could be having. Is there a guy over here now? But it's nighttime. This, this is supposed to be booth. The night watch. Sorry, get the lead out. Can we look in here? The file cabinet stands steady as ever. Oh, yeah. I think we said we were gonna come back and do that later. Since I believe resting will heal us. Hey, guy. No man matches measure head? Wrong. Not presume this has drastically altered our race dynamic. I knocked you out like a god of martial arts. True. I said nothing about our personal dynamic. That has altered a little. He means very little. Okay, um, oh, I can show you Arn's mug. 
<laughs> I really don't want to. Ever told you to help us get the body down from the tree? So it was. You bested me in race combat to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning, enemy. I will go and remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. You're so noble, Measurehead. There's a pot. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. Okay, well, I gotta sleep. That would mean you're openly showing the people that you're taking the union's side. Mm, well, that means we're showing everyone that we're taking orders from the union? Yes. That is precisely what it means, Homunculus. This is not going to happen any other way. Yeah, and what if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it on ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little okay, we're not gonna fine. Do Goodbye. Maybe, maybe we'll... And we will probably do it, but, um... I guess let's try and rest before it gets too late. I don't know if something... Like, I don't think it, like, forces you to rest if you, like, pass out at a certain point. I'd, I'd rather... avoid that potential. There still ain't nobody here. Can I help you? So about that money. Yes, have you got it? I was wondering if we could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? Um, I'm an honest cop. As a police officer, you must understand that I cannot take you at your word without evidence. I mean, I can like, give you some money. Evidence being money. You can't stay here without money. I still have my key. Good luck trying to use it. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. I don't know if saying I'll break the door down is a good thing to say. Not until you bring me the money. Okay, I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. Let's go be over here. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Oh, I feel bad. Transport enclosure. Regular people just call it the cage. Hopefully it's worth $27. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. Um, what do you mean you confiscated them? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official's son and hi. I get it. They're mesmerizing. That they are. I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. Did you want to put these on your machine? No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners. That would be outrageous. Outrageously cool. He flashes a smile, barely visible in the dark. Sorry that you gotta sell them because we're poor. As I said, they're useless anyway. I should have remembered I have these earlier. But thank you. Hey. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. Don't worry, we'll make it up for you, buddy. One day, maybe. Or maybe we won't, I don't know. Now, if this is a, doesn't give me enough, I'm going to be really pissed. Go 
greetings on this fine night. What brings you here? It's cool you're open, big city vibes. The pawn shop is always open. Ooh, we have an extra shot here. I want to sell something. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are what? very, very good. Not so much. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 rael. Kim, we can retire with that. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Of course, I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Takes the cash and turns Here's to you. Here's the 70 real you need for your bill. Oh, okay. Do not waste it. The rest is for him. To compensate for the pain of being separated from his radiant spinners. Alright, that's fair. The windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Uh, I want to buy my pen back. Perhaps. Yes, fortunately, I still have it. Three thirty, and it's yours. All right, I'm not even gonna argue over it. Here you go, officer. Anything else I can do for you today? Let's try and do that skill check. We have a decent-ish shot. Anything that gives minus electrochemistry on us? No. Alright. Greetings on this fine night. What brings you Nope, still no clue. You obviously haven't been doing enough drugs lately. Alright, well, okay, cool. Screw you. We'll have 40 extra. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's your pin back. Thank you for the donation. Hello, again, In the end, it basically cost me 10 cents. So you're a horrible person and I hate you. I don't know if you noticed, but oh, yeah, about your pin. I hope you were able to pawn that old trinket. I brought it back. I know it means a lot to you. You should have it. Oh, thank you, dear. I confess I am glad to see it again. Very honorable of you, officer. You do owe me 10 cents, though. Even the lieutenant seems happy with this turn of events. Now, what else, sweetie? There you go. All right, here's your damn money. You. Can I help you? Yes. Have you got it? I have your money. Hello? Um. We are a sorry cop. But this guy's kind of an asshole, so I'm gonna slam the bills on the counter. Great, perfect. I hope you enjoy your freezing cold room with the window you broke yourself. Builds character. You've really worn down his patience. Even paying him didn't help. I don't care. The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9 p.m. tomorrow. What? Starting tomorrow, please pay for each night in advance. 20 real per night. If you don't have the money, it's over for you. Got it? You've got nowhere else to stay. Time stops advancing after two in the morning. If you haven't paid for your room by then, it's game over. Don't leave finding money to the last minute, however. It's harder to make cash after nightfall when the shops are closed and the streets empty. Okay, so sleeping on the street is not an it's option. Room here too. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? He looks at the lieutenant avoiding your gaze. Rude. We're only the coolest person in this town. Sorry, Kim. You're, you're cool, but you're not as cool as us. You still taking a shower? The door is closed. This door can only... Wait. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. The what now? The living shit. Your mesolimbic reward pathway does not mince words. It wants smokes. Nah, we'll drink alcohol. We will not smoke. This is the door to the room you redecorated. 
Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. But it's cold, Kim. And our room kind of already has the balcony with the broken window and all. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Damn, we look good. Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. Well, I know you smoke. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh, man. He looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How'd you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Okay, well, see ya. Yes, it's been a long and even full day. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. We also started the battle with the entity. Our inspection could have been more thorough, as it always can. But we have some leads we can follow up on. The body is still hanging from that tree, which is unfortunate. And there's still much to do at the crime scene. He is not particularly satisfied with your progress, but he doesn't want you to feel completely discouraged. Probably out of fear that you'll just give up and keep drinking. Yeah, it's all part of the plan. Starting from the outside and working back towards the scene of the murder. It's not my job to evaluate your methodology, officer. I'm just going through the facts. As for the interviews, we conducted an interview with Everard Clare. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information, however. He's not saying much on the matter because he thinks you could have gotten more out of Everard. Um, I'm sure we can get him to tell us more. Claire also helped you. How should I say? Remember your name? That's a relief. Hmm, I don't know how I feel about my name. Actually, I want a different name. No, no, our name isn't ruined. I mean, I'm sure this hairy guy was really popular and everyone loved him. He's just not us. That's normal. It's best not to give it too much thought. Kim must have had doubts about his name at some point too, but deliberately discarded them. Have you ever wanted to change your name? Change? No, not exactly. But I think all of us at some point imagined what our lives might have been had we been something else. And then we feel trapped by the names we've been given as symbols of the intentions and expectations of others. He pulls a long, pensive drag? Even if I were to change my name now, upon hearing any syllable that sounds like Kim in the street, I turn to see who was calling me. But let's move on to the Wild Pines rep. Who's the Wild Pines rep? No, we didn't. It's very important that we do it tomorrow, latest. I don't even know who that is. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? You I gotta get the let out. If anything, I feel like we're too damn slow. I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until we get up tomorrow. It's part of the jam rock shuffle. It's impressive, especially for a man your age and in those hills. Making fun of my shoes, Kim? Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. He looks at your snakeskin shoes and smiles suddenly. What What do we do exactly? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold slip. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. And if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in the watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. So what happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest. Well, yeah, you know what I mean, you little pendant. In Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. Okay, who makes all the rules? The coalition government and the moral intern, more broadly. 
The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Gaze is absently fixed on a window below that just went dark. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed in the RCM. Well, let's just say it was the citizens. Be sentimental if you like. Either way, the Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. But what's the moral intern? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. So, I mean, if I didn't know, how would you describe them? They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What's their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something ominous. Something even a little feminine. But in a strict manner. Uh, sure, whatever you say, sir. What do, you, what do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. Who's that? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. What do you think about him? Moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. So you like the moral intern? Yes, I did. When I was younger. In my 20s, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. I have an opinion. Do you? Oh, God. Uh, so... <laughs> That's a one of these is really not like the other, ma'am. So I mean, basically, they're like they're centrists, kind of. I mean, I don't know. I feel like we didn't get like the most vivid picture of what moralists are supposed to be in universe. Um, they're they're very status quo. I do think it's fair to say they haven't done too good of a job here, though. And we probably are protecting bourgeoisie rights. I think we'll just kind of go with the standard. They don't really seem to be doing good at their job. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Then we should make our own law. Spoken like a revolutionary, not a cop. But hypothetical aside, in Martinez we already are vigilantes. At least the Union thinks so. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. Look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me. He thinks, this little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, you know. It's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company. Not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. And in Jamrock? We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. He looks at the dark silhouette of the equestrian monument cutting into the night sky. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... 
But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. But they can always work better. Night. Captain Ptolemy Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse wakes by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead. The sky is black. Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat as he mounts the horse to head home. Rows of houses on either side, hunching over the sidewalks, and Precinct 41 with its dome roof growing distant. Around him, the streets are silent. The kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes the turn on Petition and Main. The horse neighs. The captain nods back. Thanks, kid, he thinks. He's grateful. Well, I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. W well, Kim, is it time to let you in on a secret that we may be the last communist in the entire world, potentially? We haven't decided yet? Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. We have, an Ooh, we have another new skill point. We got two skill points. Now, we could also, like, unlock a thought spot. Let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar in the groupies and cocaine riddled with hepatitis C strikes a lioness pose with a mic kind of way. You're not Gil Giluame de Lemillion or David Dewis. No, you're a metaphorical super superstar. You bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it. Where some would say it doesn't belong. Law enforcement. And we could just forget this. But I guess, I mean, we may, we may as well unlock new slots before we start forgetting old ones, if it's the same cost. Oh, let's start internalizing that. Why not? And we'll just keep holding on to a skill point. Oh, do you live in the other room? Good look at the mirror. Maybe we'll do the mirror in the morning. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Crawl in. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. I better not die on the bed. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep. And then sleep doesn't come. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. Roll over to the other side. It's a little better. Colors. Scenes and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed him? Who? Something to do with... What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. No more thoughts. Fall asleep. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images Images start forming. Uh, yo, the town's looking a little rough. Hey, dead body, sir. You gonna tell? Hey, no, that's 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 uh. Don't let him see your fear. This must be Harry. Do you remember the scent of your childhood? I was born in a hospital where people usually go to die. You're not kidding anyone, Harry. You don't remember shit. Tell me. A nice disco. 
Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? Um... What? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth? I, mean, I guess we were left. That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle and the other on your dick. Watching her go. Let it all be dragged away from you. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? He's in the room next to us. We have Kim. We don't need any other friends. I don't want. I don't want to be Harry. We're Raphael they now. We're only cramping your descent into the abyss. Now they're gone. Three times gone and never coming back. All of it. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? What's Elysium? Everything. The pale and the easterless. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. You need like a lozenge, sir? You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people. And you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. Well, I'm, I'm trying to solve the case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet. Grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. There's another type of hangover? I and mean, we did have a little alcohol. Boy, and it's worse than the one we just had a little, just to make sure just we don't die. The shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already, a silent alarm goes off in your head, like clockwork, barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. I mean, our job could be worse. Not get up. Good going, buddy. I had the most beautiful dream, uplifting, rejuvenating. Really? Because you feel even worse this morning than you did last That's night. That's just what you say. I don't believe if I just say I feel good, I'll feel good. You mean why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. No, I feel super good. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. No. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. I can, I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks, maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I, don't, I don't think they're all going to die if we don't do speed. Sad shell, man. See how you do without your spark. Well, I think we'll call it here. Next time, I think we're going to go look in the mirror again. Wasn't that like a 
Actually, was there a skill check there? I can't remember if there was actually a skill check or not. I just remember there was like some options that we didn't pick because I was worried we were going to like die. Because we had like no HP. We might go investigate the mirror again. And start looking around. I'm Extra Cheesy 87. Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.